stars. I ain't worried about the drama on my grind like I can skate. Middle finger to the flashes in my face like fuck the fame. I just want a couple dollars so my girl can change her name. Empty promises from entities I lost like Navigate. Got no patience, I can't wait. Everything is showing time. What's going on, everybody? This is the Kings and Queens podcast. You know we got a special guest in the building. But watch your mouth because he might whoop your ass. <laughs> man, go ahead and tell me your Instagram name, man. So, so everybody can tag you in. It's Darnell Davis, hashtag BJJ. Get it. Not not anything else, but Darnell Davis. Two Ds. What, what's, what's your Instagram? What's on? Darnell Davis, underscore BJJ. Underscore BJJ. Not BJ, like our comedic, our comedic um, director, but BJJ. You know what I'm saying? Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's a, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> that, that. That makes sense now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Oh, oh man. Well, okay. So before we get started, like, share, subscribe to your moms, your pops, your brother, your sister, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins, your nephews, your your step cousins, your step nephews, your step brother, and your step sister. Go ahead and tell your moms, your step moms. I'm sorry, step dad. Grandparents, step grandparents, abuelas, abuelas, cats, <laughs> dogs, birds, reptiles. Y'all got anything y'all want to put in there? Tell your house shoes, your house shoes, the cameraman, hey. the TV, huh? the cell phone, huh? the home phone, Who? your granny phone, huh? is a flip phone, Who? the beeper, hey. all that. I mean, the Chill. TVs are listening anyway, so might as well. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. You gotta tell them. That's Hit that real. button on your remote, it got a mic on it. That's real. So, like, share, subscribe, and get ready, y'all, because we got a lot of good content. I got a crazy question for all of you. How was y'all's day today? It was pretty good. You know what? I I'll start this one off. It was pretty good. Um, I start off with conditioning. Get up, so I'm up at usually 5 a.m. Yeah. Um, run about five miles, and then we get into a lot of drilling, a lot of uh, positional sparring. Holy Very shit. early in the morning. I asked so. him how his day was. He gave me out a real workout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then after that, I get a little get a little break in. Just usually just some water. Go drive down to Octagon MMA. Damn. Um, where I get another two hours in, and then a um, lot more training, a lot more sparring, a lot more of the technical stuff. And then usually I just write my after that come home, shower, write my papers, and yeah. Dang, so, so you having a good day today? Yeah, yeah. Every, every day above ground is a good day, sir. No, That's huge facts. facts on that. Especially with all the stuff going on. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I love training too. Five shit. miles, though. Oh no, that's a that's a start. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people can't run one mile. I know you running five. Yeah, every day. Yeah, I'm five days out of the week, man. Yeah. It's just it's just something to help. Uh, like I was talking with one, it helps. Um, just just starts the day off at a good note, you know what I mean? Like okay. A lot of people, they have a lot of pent-up aggression, they have a lot of That's negativity facts. and stuff like that. They don't know nothing to do, they don't know really know what to do with it. Run. So you can run, you can, you know, meditate, you can just be active, you know, because I don't believe that a lot of us are, that's being promoted. It, it is, the people are talking about it, but there's, you know, no one's really pushing the envelope saying like, get out there, go do something. And plus that's something I picked up from the military, just. Right. You know, we up at 5.30, yeah, getting ready to run at 6, and just certain habits just die hard, I guess. So. That's real, that's real. Juan, YT, how y'all day going? I can't say, you know how my day was going, man. Well, I've been on that duty. Huh? I've been on that duty. Call him. I've been on that duty. Call him, Modern Warfare. You feel me? We Stop won the this. tournament earlier, so it's been good. Juan? Yeah, my day's been pretty uneventful. Like, I got, <laughs> I got, I got a new job now, like... I'm delivering pizzas, I'm not managing anything anymore, so like before, when I was doing that, I'd be so busy during the week, like I'd have all this stuff to do on the weekend, yeah. now, I'm not really managing anything, so it's just Saturday, Sunday, I'm just like, because right. I can do my stuff during the week, so well, I've been did, hitting the gym. You did come, I said you did come by. You yeah, you keep well, yeah I keep, when I came by, I was like, damn, it's, that gym smell awful, like, <laughs> <laughs> smell, I smell yeah. some serious sweat up in there. Yeah, that's good. Like, like, work, work. Dedication, yeah. I was yeah. going to record, but I showed up a bit late because um, I got caught up in some traffic. Yeah. And plus, you know, they told me I have to go through like a little process to get the footage. 
Plus, I was kind of scared. I was like, there was a sign that said no recording. I'm like, if I start recording, they might beat my ass. Yeah. So let me just <laughs> put my phone away. <laughs> That's great. That's crazy, real. I'm glad all of y'all are here today, man. Thank you, uh, Mr. Davis, for no, coming out. It's Darnell, dog. You ain't got to. Oh, hey, y'all. It's Mr. Davis to y'all, nigga. Nah, big <laughs> Put some respect on his name. And thank you, YT, for coming out. Yes, Warren. sir. So, Darnell. Oh, how was your day, son? Thank you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. You got the mask on because you, you... He don't have the coronavirus. Yeah, I ain't got the coronavirus. I was about to say, I'm a little interested. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you got something to share? Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to share it now. I want to share it. You got the bang thing going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I like it, but I'm, I'm curious yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Just a small little herpy bump. No, no, no. I ain't good. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my lady. No, it's great. Uh, no, oh, man. No disrespect. I, it's, <laughs> I didn't, even, I didn't even think that far ahead. <laughs> hey, look, my show was thinking of it. Hey, hopefully, his, hopefully his girl don't. No, shit. I don't know, man. I didn't think that he went to an NBA Youngboy concert. No. That was all that happened. That was all that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little small, little cold, man. I ain't trying to get anybody sick. You know what I'm saying? Because sickness ain't too good. We ain't middle school anymore. Facts. Mm -hmm. um, so, Donnell. Mm -hmm. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. One of my podcasts that I do enjoy watching, shout out to Joe Rogan, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I do watch the Joe Rogan podcast, and he also talks about, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like one of his main things he loves to, his main style he loves him doing. Mm -hmm. um, along with wrestling and boxing and so forth. Okay. But why Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, not Muay Thai, anything else? Well, see, I'm a, actually, I'm a fan of Muay Thai. So, like, most kids, you know what I'm saying, like, I grew up playing Street Fighter, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You go to the cousin's house and, you know, you find the little code, you hit the select button, you, you, you find a way to get Sagat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I grew up watching the Kung Fu movies, I grew up watching the Bruce Lee flicks, yeah. and, you know, that the animes, that was my real my mm -hmm. real introduction to martial arts. Man, I y'all see how big his hands is? He finna slap the shit out of somebody. <laughs> nah, these, this, this is, there's a lot of And it's just tatted. Oh, bro, that's <laughs> you. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, it was um, it was something I was interested in really young. Um, my family, we couldn't afford it. So I was a fan for a very long time. Um, I had a friend. So back in, so I'm, I'm originally from Southern California. And okay. so when Brazilian Jiu Jitsu came to California, I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you still hear the Gracies and, you know, the Machados, and they're out here just like tearing shit up. You know, in the, those early UFC, you know what I'm saying, UFC 1, UFC 2, UFC, right. those, those stuff, before they started banning it on television. And um, I didn't really think much of it. In high school, I wrestled mm. for like five minutes. Yeah. Got kicked out of school for fighting, go figure. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for real. Um, had a transfer for schools, got out, joined the military. Why are you fighting to do Like, what happened? Like, what, what caused that fight to happen? You seem like a really awesome person, man. I'm yeah, trying to got their triggers, though. Yeah. 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 Hey, you know what? I, I didn't. I, I didn't get this way on accident, and you know, I think when you, when you're going and you're trying to reach for your your highest version of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying this is a step. You don't start from the top. Yeah. To get to the top, you have to begin somewhere. So, I was. A, I remember being a very angry, angry young man, and I didn't know how to communicate. Unfortunately, that's something that a lot of Af young African American males right. are stigmatized and they have to overcome to you know progress in this world you have to learn how to communicate mm. effectively you can't always be about violence right um, so that a fight is what actually got me out of uh, that high school <clears throat> went switched to another school went into the military after high school um, army army yes and um, the exposure came from there you know, so I had friends that were doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and it it was just an amazing outlet. Yeah. Um, I can't really put into words what it meant for me at that time, but it was something that once you kind of get that itch, once you kind of like, dang, okay, I could I could really see myself doing this. Plus, you know, it promotes so many other things. It promotes healthy eating. It promotes, you know, self discipline. Yeah, a, a very strong amount of discipline. Yeah. And, you know, you're seeking ways to get better. And the only real way to get better in jiu-jitsu, besides doing more jiu-jitsu, yeah. is, you know, you have to look at your nutrition. You have to look at how you're spending and managing your time, you know, outside of recovery. Um, what are you reading? Things right. like that. And 
it's just something that built on from there. Um, Why does reading play a part in it? Hmm? Why does reading play a part in it? Well, you got It's a thinking man's game. It's not. It's, it's not just. It's not just you know wrestling some guy, some strong old guy to the ground. Is you know there's other disciplines for that. But with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you are literally playing chess with another person's body. I'm mm. really happy you said that because I work at a middle school, right? Okay. And like you said, uh, one of the kids that's at my school is an African American male, and he. Um, he can say there is some picked up anger. He always trying to play fight. He always trying to fight people and mm -hmm. hit on girls and whatnot. And he said, you know, he he can he can fight anybody. And when the teacher was saying to him like, listen, you don't want to be doing stuff out of anger. You know, do mm -hmm. stuff properly, doing stuff. So when you refer to reading and having that self discipline to calm one's mind to play chess moves, mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that. I'm making sure he see that shit too. Yeah, cause it's it's real. I think when you're weaponizing. Because the, 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 the body, the, the mind only goes as far as the body and vice versa. You need both. Right. And so where you put emphasis on one over the other, you're still lacking. Yeah. So, you know, before you decide to lift those weights, before you decide to go out and perform that martial art, do some research. Right. Do some history. Know what you're getting into. What type of gym, um, mm. what type of recovery mm. do they offer? Things like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Do they have... Are they just on tournaments? Are they are they just strictly a competition gym? Do right. they have a kids program? And these are all things. And also, this goes back into you know, as minorities, where are we putting our money? Because mm -hmm. if it's just to go out and compete, you know, there's plenty <coughs> of brothers out here that I could show a quick, you know, slap on this arm bar and yeah. they can go out there and do that. But if it's not doing for you, nothing for you in the long term, it's wasting your time. Right. And Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was just, it it was something that helped enhance. <clears throat> my vision of the world. I've made a lot of friends all over the world because of it. Um, teaching Germany mm -hmm. when I go back home and uh, I have classes there that I assist with. I help a lot of the, you know, with a lot of the build up in terms of like how that culture was designed for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And it's just, it's a really good feeling knowing that you have an impact right. off of something that you like. <clears throat> so. That's real deep. Um, now, you also mentioned about, you know, at a youthful time, you know, we all start from a certain place. And you also talked about the military as well. Mm -hmm. um, what influenced you to not pick up a gun, but be like Friday when Pop said, these will make you a man, Craig? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. what influenced you to not use weapons and instead of, you know, using more physical stuff instead? Because with a gun, like, like I grew up in a community where, like, you saw what those end results look like. You can't pull no bullet back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a body on the ground and like that's a body on you. So right. the you know what I'm saying? The bullet go the bullet goes one direction but the body goes two places. Does that make sense? Yes. Hits that ground and it goes on you, it's stuck with you. Right. So you know, you can't be and my mother was really good about this and just making sure that we always knew we had options. Right. Now how we got to them, you know, Rob Silla Bar or do what you yeah. gotta do. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But like just know that in this world you will always have options and it's a matter of how hard you're willing to work <clears throat> to those options. Um but they're out there. <clears throat> yeah. Just you know, don't let these situations get to you. As far as picking up a gun, I mean I'm not I was never that type of dude right. to do that. Um <clears throat> this meant a lot more because yeah. I mean you put a bullet in somebody, yeah, the fight's done, but you know, Back in my time, you know, it was permanent, it's you know? still, it's still, yeah. this still meant something because at the end of the day, like if I put hands on you, one of us, you know, good thing about a fight, one of us got to take an L, right? Thanks. Yeah, right. And back mm -hmm. in my day, it meant more knowing that you know this young man or this person did me in or I did them in. We got to see each other right. afterwards. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? So gonna either be different. it's gonna be we gonna have some respect on, for each other after yeah. that. We right. gonna, you know. We gonna keep beefing, or wh whatever that whatever that outcome looks like. But you know, with a weapon, it, it takes it to a whole another level. Now, you know, I'm not here to promote violence, but you know, there's some cases where you know, people people holding court on the street. That's just you know, that's 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 what it is. But for me, it just it was there was nothing in this world that was ever that serious. Right. That's right. To put a you know in another mm -hmm. black man, another brown man's life. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So you did briefly speak about your moms. Who were some people who influenced you, who guided you to become the person, you, the king you are today? Uh, you know what? My mother has just taken, you know, from the nine months and 34 years of uh, just <clears throat> just tussle. I, I think we all kind of have it out. Not have it out, but 
as, as, as we realize our parents are people too, as yeah. we get older and we see more of those disagreements, we may not, you know, although there was a lot of disagreements with how I lived my life um, and some of the choices she made, it never ended the love. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Um, her, my aunt, so, you know, as far as the women in my family, we're all very, we're all very close to my auntie Ned. Um, I also had friends in the military right. that just really kind of either stuck their neck out, stuck their neck out for me, or actually, you know, we're out here, you know, in these sands, really fighting right. to bring each other home. You yeah. know, what I mean, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of the, a lot of them are dead though. Not and I and I hate to, you know, bring really, the mood down, but yeah, you know, what I mean, a lot of my a lot of my friends that impacted me the most are. You know, passed away. Yeah, passed away. Um, you know, casualties of war, right. drug addiction, something like that. But I think at the also uh, something to take away from it is you can learn something from anybody. It's just whether or not you know what. What are you looking for when you <clears throat> interact with another man or another woman? Right. You know. So yeah, that's real. Uh, <clears throat> Cool. Why so, I gotta do the sound effects. <laughs> 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 I hit it like man, I gotta let myself know. Um, now. <clears throat> Uh, like you said, people are still people, and just recognizing that they people do play a uh, a good influential role in certain parts mm -hmm. and aspects. Um, my question to you is now is, do you feel? Because no, some people are scared to join the military. Yeah. Do you feel that you know? I asked Chris. You know Chris from uh, yeah, the segment Chris. Yeah. Chris. Yeah, we were in the same organization. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I asked him a question. I asked him. Uh, if he felt like education was for everyone, and he he did say um, trade is also another uh, replacement for people who are still seeking education or mm -hmm. wanting to still accomplish something. So, do you feel that the military, seeing how it did play a good influential part in your life, do you feel that can also be an outcome? I mean, it's I I feel like. Whatever you put your time and your energy to, that's what's going to produce the most outcome, whether that's education, whether that's a trade. Because, you know, again, I have a 15 year old daughter. And she's a terrorist right now, so Damn. we'll be, <laughs> you know, but I love her, but I you know what I'm saying? 25, man. Nah, dog. I'm, I, I sleep and I eat when I'm supposed to. That's, 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 crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. But, um. How old are you? How old am I? 34. Really? Nine really? months, 34 years. The time the mother put into it. Bum bum bum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. I hear the thirty-four years part. Yeah, I heard the nine months. Nine months, thirty-four, 34 years. Oh, yeah. Damn. You know, I, I tell you know, I tell my daughter all the time, like, don't think that after high school you have to go to college. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because if it ain't for you, it's not for you. Don't allow people to try to con you or mislead you into something that they're able to settle with. Because mm -hmm. There's plenty of millionaires, there's plenty of successful and most importantly happy people that have never touched a book in their life. So when I hear, you know, I also believe that the military isn't for everybody. Right. You know, I think what the military has to offer in the long run is that if you are kind of pinned on making a change in your life and having those having those demons come out of that closet and being exposed and really kind of staring them at that in the face and yes the military is a great way to go but what i will advise is that get what you can out of it because they're going to get what they want out of you which is your time that's real and so don't the biggest mistake a lot of people that come from low socioeconomical status areas and communities is that they go into this they go into the military give military 10 20 years come out with nothing right you know um no, no. Facts. <laughs> Definitely come out with some sort of education. Come out with some certificates. Come out because it's there. Right. You know, but people don't want it. People don't see those parts of it. People don't come out with the benefits. People don't come mm. out trying to use those skills and push forward or go into a skill or a trade, as Chris right. was mentioning, and progressing forward. Right. You know, um, when I joined the military, I was a kid trying to feed his daughter. Right. And so I was just like, I don't know what I need to get into. Put me in something. They were like infantry. My mom was like, you will break my heart if you go into the infantry. I was like, okay, I won't do infantry. But I know I can't be behind a desk. Right. 
So I became a 19 kilo, and what that is is an M1 armor crewman to tank. So, oh, so I was playing around with tanks all day. And I think I clipped down Call of Duty earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> um, went in there. I had a, I had a, it was a cool 12 years. Learned a lot. Um, and I saw a lot of things. The biggest takeaway is you can see the world in a rare form. Right. You know what I'm saying? If, if The thing about war is you will see people for who they are. You will see, you'll see the violence. You'll see the, you know, betrayal. You'll see, you'll see all those things. You know, guys coming back home to empty homes and empty bank accounts. Right. You know, they don't talk to you about those things. They don't tell you how to recover that. They don't talk to you about the psychological effects right. of it and how to integrate yourself into the community and so if I you know if I'm gonna say anything to anybody interested in the military what I would tell them is they need to look into also what they're getting out of it mm -hmm. and also if you are in the situation where you're you know in combat or you're in a high intensity conflict area you need to seek treatment right whether you feel like it or not I was you know because at one point it was very it was taboo to go seek that help right until like you know organizations like mission 22 mm -hmm. was having to surface up because soldiers were coming home and they were killing themselves right yeah. i think it was something around 22 22 soldiers a, a, a minute or something like something 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 terrible right and whether you are or for or against the war or not, um, that's still somebody's daughter, that's still somebody's son, right. and there's nothing too serious in this world that can, can't be fixed. True, true. Now you did briefly mention like um, being able to face demons and stuff. Now we understand you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and when you're in the ring, um, when you fight, do you think about, okay, what if I actually didn't kill this person? Or, and if you did, how would you handle that? Like what do you feel is the necessary steps to recover from that, like PTSD and all you suffer from, people suffer from that. Yeah. Especially in the military and so forth as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just, just to, because I know, I don't know if there's any other military <clears throat> people, you know, subscribers. No, military members are not the only ones with PTSD. Right. So, right. you know, there's, there's definitely other forms of it. Um, and I don't want to stigmatize. Right. Veterans with being, you know, the poster children for PTSD. Because right. as we all know, as educated black men, there's other ways that those symptoms and those uh, conditions present themselves. Correct. Um, yeah, I better know. So, a, as far as when I, when, when my mindset going into the ring, my mindset going into the mats, I'm not thinking about, and that's the beauty of jujitsu. I'm not thinking about what happened. I'm not thinking about the deployments. I'm not thinking about the stresses. I'm thinking about that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, as far as me intention, because. If, so after so many years of training, if I go out and it's like, what if, like, for example, you, the, the example you mentioned earlier where I kill somebody, right. that, that's an intentional, that's an intentional something because we do something, we, we do this, we tap, we, or they, or they just pass out right. if you choke them, but they tap, yes. and, um, you know, if you go past that tap, you're wrong. Right. At the end of the day, there's nothing going on in those masks that's that serious to where you have to, you know, end another person. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, as you know, as Juan described it, like nobody, and I, you know, I talked, he came to the gym, he came by and he's like, damn, like, ain't nobody, nobody here looks like they're playing. I was like, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. But it's nothing personal either. Right. You know, and so when you go out to these matches, you go to these tournaments, you're probably going to become like half of my, a good portion of my Jiu Jitsu followers on Instagram, <clears throat> um, or all people who I fought, or you know, we've interacted in some way, shape, or fashion right. on the mats in the tournament, um, you know, Berlin, Italy, things of that nature. And the first time we met each other, they were like, you know, the rules, you know, the rules. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. And you know, you become really good friends because again, it's nothing personal. We're right. all here to make each other better. Right. And the only way we do that is by trying to choke each other out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's why the mask is here. It's so, not Corona. <laughs> no, it's no. not Corona. 
<laughs> ain't hurt. You see yeah, the mother thing. I, <laughs> I had somebody say, they said, Juan, you have a virus named after you, the Wuhan. I said, no. My name is Juan, not Wuhan. Don't start that shit. <laughs> That's crazy. That's dope. You know what? I didn't even think about that. But yeah, yeah. Like, Wuhan, China, right? Yeah. yeah, that's where it, yep. You do got a virus named after you. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now, how do you feel about CT? Um, that is, C, it's not CTD. It's CC. CTE, you're talking about the it's head injury? CTE? That was, I thought it was. I think they were saying, are you talking about the thing they said? Yeah, football football. yeah. yeah. That's CTE. CT, correct? It's CTE. CTE? Okay, yeah. CTE. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, now, you're talking about TV? You're talking about traumatic brain? Correct. The, yeah, no, no, the movie Concussion that Will Smith played? No, I haven't seen that. You should watch that. It's a good movie. Okay. Uh, they say, like, Antonio Brown, they say he has CTE. Mm -hmm. I guess he's probably CTE. It's not like it's a yeah, movie. CTE. Is it like cere cerebral trauma? Yeah. Something? yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, with being in a physical sport, mm -hmm. what are you, like, how do you, not to say prevent that, but what are your steps towards that? Do you keep that in mind? I'm trying to, in, the, in your later years, about preventing head too much head trauma or being too messed up or you know well the good news is brazilian at all the disciplines brazilian jiu-jitsu is the least impactive on your joints really? so you can actually do it into your old age okay. um now as far as competitions concerned right. yes you will you know mouth guard you will always you know come out you be professional because really you set the tone right um when you are out there um and a lot of training, because a lot of very simple mistakes have large outcomes. Right, so yeah. that comes with practices. That comes with being mindful and knowing that, you know, even if I don't get this medal, even if I don't get this podium, you know, I'm still able to train. So an example that we have is there's an instance where two young women, they, they were high level, they were black belts. Right. Um, and there's a shoulder manipulation it's called a Kimura. Okay. Heard. And it attacks the shoulder specifically. And the the woman didn't tap. And so, shoulder popped. Oh, wow. Ooh. And so, you know, you had a lot of people who, you know, you can tell who trains and the one who don't, right? And right. so the people who don't train, they're like, yeah, she's a total badass, blah, blah, blah. But the, the rest of us were sitting here like, that's not badass, bro. Like, yeah. that's six months of her out the game. Yes. Period. While that person is sit, getting six months stronger yeah. in her jujitsu, you know? So um, that's why I said things like that where people intention, when people get injured, that's a choice. Right. To an extent. There's nothing, again, there's nothing that serious about that. But I always, <clears throat> again, I try to be professional. I try to be mindful of, you know, the opponents. And I got to know that at the end of the day, they still want to train. I still want to train. It's, right. it's nothing... You know, you're just not going to go in there, just like throw a guy on his neck, just stomp him out. Yeah, like, yeah. no, no, it's not that serious. Like, yeah, yeah. You see that, clip? <laughs> you see that clip of that dude? They went like some karate class, but he was like, if somebody comes up to you, like you throw him on the ground and then you stomp him and you break the neck. Oh, you're talking about was it the kin, the kin master? I, I love that because it's, 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 you don't do it, yeah. but it's so damn funny. Just yeah. Like, you know, because you joke about it, it's like, throw the guy down, <laughs> stuff him in the groin, yeah, throw him yeah, in the groin yeah. again. And then you talk about driving over him with your car. Yeah. Everybody's like, ain't that serious, yeah. dude. Like, guys, what was it when the students was like, you know... What if he was just yeah. asking for directions? <laughs> well, he got all the directions he needed right there. Yeah, right? facts. <laughs> he was directing straight to heaven. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's real. So... Uh, do you have anyone that you look up to in, in the fighting in the fighting uh, sport? Is there any fighter that you look up to or maybe try to, uh, not necessarily mimic, but learn their style or people that you just kind of want to, you know, uh, what's people? Emulate? Icons. Emulate, yes. But what's the people that you look up to? Uh, That's why it's important to read, like he said. Don't want to say idolize, <laughs> but you talk about Idolize, idolize. Well, not, uh, not idol, but, you know, people like kind of like mentors or people yeah. that, you know, um, so the good thing about my gym is that there are, we have a, we have a we have a rarity right so we have anywhere between like seven to ten black belts on the mat wow, okay. at any given time and in the jiu-jitsu community that's actually a, unless you're at one of these bigger gyms it's very rare right it's major so you know I have a chance to pick the brain of a lot of different people so it's hard to really pick just one of course uh, Octavio who is 
the head coach, Rafael, <coughs> they are, they've been around since I was a whole white belt since I started this, and this was, what is it, 2020? So this summer, it'll be close to eight years. Right. I've been really active in the community and jiu-jitsu, and they've been very consistent. I have a lot of good friends back home. Uh, one in particular, his name is Felix. And then uh, Marcos, we, we've we actually, we started together, we, we've we been fighting together we, in, in the jiu-jitsu and in the German community. We grew up together in that regards of like, we remember when there was only three black belts in the entire country. Wow. And you know, and two of them lived in Bavaria and we had access to both of yeah. those guys. So right now we were Blessings. like, and so now the, as the sport grows, you got more Brazilians coming in. But, you know, no, despite all the changes and all the growth and development, like, we've always remained uh, consistent. So, if I would have to say, as far as major influences, I'm still, th in my head, I'm still trying to keep up with my friends. That's real. You know what I'm that's saying? Lit. That's lit. That's lit. That's beautiful. And I was going to ask you, because, um, I, you know, I already know this, you're from California, but you mostly, you consider Germany your home now. Yeah, yeah. So, like... How do you, like, what's the difference? Like, I spoke to you recently. I asked you how it was. You said it was good to be home. And I thought you were talking about here. Then I realized, no, he's talking about Germany. Yeah. So, like, what's it like <coughs> to go over there and then come back over here? Like, is it like a culture shock kind of? or? Well, when you're up there, I think, first off, I yeah. think every person of color needs to get the fuck out of the States. And I'll tell you why. Because the world... It's so vast, there's so much culture, there's so much diversity out there to just limit yourself to <clears throat> Texas. To, to, to stigmas. Yeah. You know, when you think of so the, the African American culture as it's perceived around the world is mm. entertainment based. Right. We have the fly shoes, we have, you know, the nicest clothes, the biggest cars, the most naked women, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Right. But like you're not really known for the intellectual, you're not really yeah. known for, you know, other keep the si yeah, basically, That's right? That's a good way to put it. So basically, civil shit. And, yeah, yeah, it's um, but You know, so when I when I went there, I was 22. I had just got back from my first deployment to Iraq, and you know, we ended up showing up on a weekend, and then my buddy uh, Billy, God rest his soul, he. He and I, we, we went out, because we, we both deployed from First Cab together, and just toured the city, right. uh, toured the whole area. We went to Nuremberg our first weekend, and you would be very surprised how, you know, culturally meshed everybody is really? in Europe. So, like, where, you know, America is the melting pot, but, like, it's in small pockets, but mm -hmm. in Europe, you actually see it. You yeah. see the <clears throat> Russians, you see the Italians, you see the Germans, you see the Turkish, you see Africans, yeah. you see you see everybody. And like, you know, it, it's a it's a beautiful thing, number one, because that's really the culture shock. I never saw, I, I, I heard about it, you know, you, you can you can think about it, but until you actually see it in action. Right. And it's nothing. It's not a big deal. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not like so much. Oh, you're, you're, you're black. No, it's American, yeah. German, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. So at the end of the day, what it really boils down to is that, one, you get to realize just how much in common you have with other black people around the world. I've met brothers from France who, uh, shout to Clue, he uh, dog cut my hair. Yeah. Out in Paris, and we were just talking. That, you know. Talking like we never we known each other for years. Yeah, yeah. Went out to London, went out to Amsterdam. Yeah. Black people were the same everywhere. Definitely. That's you it. know what I'm saying? Like that's that's and that's another reason why you need to go out there yeah. and you need to go see the world. So you, one, you can see not only how other black people are living, but what you can learn from them. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Um Write it down, y'all. Write it down. It's it's it's, it's also like, it, that's why it's cru it's crucial to get that passport, you know, get out your comfort zone because that's how you're gonna grow. You can't you can only do so much growth like in a in a in a flower pot. Mm. So I study okay. you know phytochemistry and plants and microorganisms, mm. but you know there's only so much growth you can get out of in a in a small clay pot. Right. You get a lot more out there in that grass. You get yeah. a lot more out there in a field. Yeah. And you can really thrive, and I feel like um, I was able to do that at a very young age. Mm. So 
uh, Germany specifically, I did a lot of my maturing out there right. and, you know, going back and forth between deployments and war and spending time with my daughter, I really got to understand like my life in perspective. And there was there was support there. Right. You know, I have friends that I come back home, you know, Vasos Los or which is, you know, hey, what's going on? Yeah. And again, it's like I never left. They're, you know, they're they're really excited yeah. for the day I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna stay put. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And these are these are other black people, these are other Germans and you get to grow and you get to actually enjoy your life. Because I think at the end of the day, with all the civil rights and all the discussions and the petitioning and the advocating that we do as people of color, as members of low SES communities, at the end of the day, we just want to belong and we also want to feel human. That's right. And so, like, when you go to these other countries where, you know, one of the bars in Amberg, so where I live at, I live in a city called Amberg, and one of the bars is actually older than the country. Really? <laughs> At least. The bar itself is older than this country. That's so, it. like, in terms of when people, when it, 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 it forces you to really, when you think about that, like, think, really think about that. There's a bar older than this constitution in yeah. this country. And so it really, the, the the ego, the bravado that we have, it's very minuscule at the end of the day. And it helps create that bigger picture of, like, okay, what does the world really have to offer? Right. And for me, you know, being back in Germany, being back in uh, that part of the world, I get to, you know, I get to relax. I get to, you know, have my influence. I get to run my gym. Right. Um, I get to study my sciences. I get to go out and learn about how other people have been doing the same stuff that, as black people, we've been doing for thousands of years. Yeah. And guess what? They give us the credit. That's real. That's beautiful. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Do you watch boxing at all? I do. Do you watch female boxing? I should. <laughs> I should, but I don't. I think that last Pacquiao fight. Uh, I was going to ask you about uh, Clarissa Shields. Mm -mm. You don't have to educate me. I one, of the, one of the dopest female boxers since mm. Layla Ali. Really? And she challenged Layla Ali. Mm. And really? Is, oh, I know who you talk. Yeah, Layla is considering coming out of retirement. Just I, yeah. You know what? Because I think, and you know what? That would be that would be so dope. Again, like shout out to Layla Ali, like you know, because what that I, what just me hearing that from a fighter's perspective that says there's no like I'm not above yeah. anybody because of my name. And guess what? At the end of the day, I'm still boxing. Yeah, I'm still a boxer. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so like. Let's 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 give this woman an opportunity because if she works for it, she should get it. She should get it. If I work for it, I should keep it. And yeah. that's not that's not a bad that's not a bad situation. That sounds awesome. Like definitely. I think she holds like twelve belts like right now. The the Clarissa. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, she's yeah. not playing. Mm. Yeah. Not trying to get. I'm not trying to get hit in the face by nobody. That's she's why I do champion. what I do. But oh no no, I believe it. <laughs> look, look, a punch in the face, male or woman, it don't matter. It, look, it don't oh, tickle. Yeah. yeah <laughs> now I'm glad you asked that question, YT. Now there have been some uh, some progressive movements, mm -hmm. some progressive movements where you now are starting to see more transgender um, who wants to 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 compete. Like for example, there was a transgender. Yeah, yeah. I know where you're going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, 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 there's a transgender woman who was also finding um, an actual natural birth woman, born woman. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Don't, get, don't get mad at me. I mean, I'm not sure where cis that. women. I think I'm not sure. Cis, the, the transgender or no, no? I think the natural born is called cis. I don't. Know. That's weird. I'm sorry. I'm, mm. I'm fine. Let me chop that weird part out. Just <laughs> 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 okay, but um. Uh, how do you feel about those progressiveness, that, that progression that's taking place there? Do you feel like that's okay? Or mm, That's pretty tough because, you know, I'm not really educated enough on that in terms of other disciplines. I just know, I know what I've heard. I know that right now, the reason why it's so, because you don't know how to, assess the limits you don't know how to assess the potential of these uh, of the transgender community come into athletic sports and i know that that's 
at least from my understanding, that's the cause of concern. Now, do I agree that you should limit people um, from that lifestyle with those conditions into those sports? Absolutely not. Now, do I believe that there needs to be some research done to, and they're training and they're, you know, trying to do this at this highest level, but now you have people that are coming in that self-identify as either A or B. In this case, we're going to use the example for you have a male who self-identifies and has the phenotypic characteristics of a woman, but in terms of bio, biochemistry, you are a dude. So if you, you know, it's going to be nothing for you to develop major muscle groups that are going to enable you to be successful. So yes, I do believe, and that's one of the cool things about this country, is that if you can fight for it, fight for it. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean people are going to applaud you for it. But if you feel like that's something that's worth persevering, then I say do it. I feel like we throw that word around too too easy too. What's up? Transgender, because we call Bruce Jenner. I'm I'm not calling him Caitlyn anymore. I don't know um, who. I, I, yeah, I know Bruce. I, I look. His mama called him Bruce. See, <laughs> daddy we, called him Bruce. We I'm called him Bruce. a transgender because we thought that he went through the whole process and he didn't. Mm -mm. That's true. He did. He did. No, he he kept his male part. Oh shit! And I mean, he, he I'm kept not, it. He trying. He trying to do some shit down the side. I'm not trying to start some shit. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that same documentary I was telling you about, they were saying that like a lot of people get that surgery done anyway, like regret it because like they kind of jump into it. Like if you're gonna do the surgery, you're supposed to like. Constantly go to a doctor, see yeah, a therapist, it takes, to make it sure that's a it takes therapy. It takes a like I said, you're yeah. taking, you're taking, in situations like that, you're taking nature out of the equation. So like, yeah. you know, you're 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 being stepdad to God. Mm. Yeah. That's it, a, yeah, in a real way because now it's hormone therapy that yeah, you got to yeah. go into. Now all the body again, where if you are born a woman but you identify as a male where your body is produ constantly producing estrogen, you have to block those. Right. Now, and... And then you have to feed testosterone. So now, you're trying to rewire, just like, say, like, in a camera or in a car, if you go and rewire things, there's no guarantee, you know, if you throw in some, if you slap on any old wires yeah, without right. actually doing the research yeah. on what those specific wires do, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. And that's why I said, I think, I don't believe, you know, transgender... People should be limited, but I do believe that more research should be done to understand not only just the safety of the participants of the sport, you know, those individuals, but also ensure that the integrity right. of whatever sport that they're getting into can maintain because in situations where, you know, high school track members running every summer, running up the hill, all of a sudden, you know, you got a bunch, you know, treat them like Hondas. You got a bunch of Hondas running around yeah. trying to do stuff. All of a sudden, a, a Porsche or something comes up. Yeah. And you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is only for Hondas. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you got the Porsche, like, I identify as a Honda. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bruh. And they're like, no, this is so easy. Like, what, what is everyone bitching about? Like, no, not. that's terrible. Like, we should definitely do something to make sure that. I identify as a Honda. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's great. You should, you should definitely have some things in there where. You know, I believe safety at the end of the day is the biggest concern and to address that issue because it is such a very um, forward out there topic now, that has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Not just for the sport, for the, you know, mm -hmm. we always create another league or whatever, but for the individuals so that, you know, when they do have supplements, when they do have training regimens, if they are going through therapy, those needs are met. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I was saying also, like I said, the research yeah. for that has to be done and has to be done in a very, um, it has to be done in a way where safety is is addressed first and foremost. That's real. So let me ask you this. Um, you did mention research quite a lot. What exactly do you research on your free time? In my free time, I am a huge plant guy. Um, so in my undergrad at UNT Dallas, I did a lot of work with phytochemistry, and for those who do not know what that is, that is uh, the study of plant, like plant chemicals. So you're looking at alkaloids, you're looking at plant nutrients that pretty much give. Um, plants hold protein. I beg your pardon. Plants hold protein. Yes. 
So, you know, you study these things and what I did was I looked at the, the chemicals inside the plants and how they interacted with uh, microorganisms in the human body. Right, okay. And so that's really where my heart's at in terms of like infectious disease right. as far as plant life. That's what I look at, that's what I read on. Um, how do you feel about plant-based diet, then? Switch for an active, active, active as yourself. In, in a fighting sport, that is. It's, I, I, think, I think to me that's the, that's the unfair advantage for people because my recovery has went from, you know, where I was taking in animal base, it was maybe, you know, a little bit longer where now it's like maybe a couple of days tops. Right. So, um, so you're primarily on plant-based though. Correct. All the way vegan. Um, right? <laughs> that's, real. that's real. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. All right now, but you also mentioned about how um, fake sugars, and that's one of the stuff that you, that you look into and how it's not bad for culture and so forth. Mm -hmm. so one of the things that I've been trying to break is eating icing. Like yeah. crazy. What do you say? Ice, ice, ice. Icing. Like, icing. Eat literally the tub of icing by itself the, as meals. So like, the stuff that you put on the cake, yeah, and you put yeah, why? He, he'll put it, it, how old are you? What are you like? Twelve? Like <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I can't help it, bro. Actually, it's good. <laughs> it's cracked to him. A dollar, yeah. A dollar is, fifty, bro. Sir, I'm concerned for you. Like you I, need to we go. We all have. We <laughs> should have had an intervention. Yeah, yeah. So when you said it, not for real. Okay. Oh man. Hold up. You yeah. might need to submit him to that though. I know, I know. Hey, dog, I'm my looking. strange addictions for real. I'm, I'm, oh I'm God. good. I'm, I mean, it, look, if it makes you happy, but I'm telling you right now, like, there's a lot of. <laughs> I'll forward you some papers, good brother. Yeah, yeah, that's not. not you might want to. No, I'm, I'm trying to stop because I was trying to quit before I kept diabetes. You know what I'm saying? And hurt my heart. Cause I've been feeling some heart pain. So yeah, that's not good. That's that's actually very bad, hurt sir. Your heart, you gonna lose your teeth. Yeah. Diabetes. <laughs> there's so many other things more delicious than <laughs> icing though. Like, like straight icing. There's like fruit. With a spoon, like. There's fruit that you haven't even seen yet. Yeah. That if I put it in front of you, you're gonna be like, This is the new crack. Like yeah, do you know what have you have you had a dragon fruit? I have not. It's a fruit. Go get I, a dragon fruit. I wanna yeah. know. It's called something hand. Oh Buddha's hand? Buddha's hand. The little yellow ones and they yes. taste like Yes. Those are delicious. I want to try it. I can't. I'll go, I'll go shop at Sprouts when I'm trying to eat. Nah, you gotta go to like. Uh, you gotta go to a specialty store or Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Yeah. Okay. There's this one. Or it's Central Market. To, yeah. Central Market. I think it's like a banana, but it's like blue. I think the inside is blue, but they say it tastes like vanilla ice cream. That's it. Huh? That's kind of like some man made. Yeah, that sounds... sound because 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 you got yeah because you got the you got was it cotton candy grapes yeah, something like grapes. It? That's not that's, that's not real. Yeah, that's that's not. I heard real. lemons were like man made. And broccoli too. Broccoli, yes. Uh, broccoli now, when you talk about man-made, you got to understand that, like, you know, there's very few things that are like. There's a lot of things that are domesticated naturally, right? right. So when you yeah. when you look at things like broccoli, cauliflower, um, yeah, those are those are predominantly man-made. Uh, what was it? Is it tr not trout? What was the other one? Um, can't think of the fish. Tilapia. That's yeah, the other yeah. one. That's yeah, man made yeah. one. That's man made? Yeah, yes. it's in the sewers in China, right? Yeah, that's that's, not... that's why it tastes so different than every other fish. Well, I never, never liked had. tilapia like that anyway. Uh, that's why your body was telling yeah, you this. Is yeah, you know, <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of it out there. Uh I think when you talk about man made, when you talk about so the, the the fun words, right, when it comes to nutrition, you have organic or and you know non artificial? Artificial. Yeah. yeah. So Organic and so really, good. if you get a chance, look at the FDA definition of organic, right? So organic really is 75% or more lack of influence. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be, there might be a few pesticides removed out. Right. But it doesn't really, it's not, in this country, it's not a lot. Right. It's not a big difference. Um, one, of the, one of the stories that I had, so when I came, my, I think my first year back in the States, I had, there was a colleague of mine, she had got some seedless grapes. Okay. And they, she, you know, I got these organic grapes and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm a plant dude, so I'm like, hold up. Seedless, seedless yeah. grapes, that's not organic. Yeah. They all have seeds in yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. so. Um, I never thought about that. Yeah, so like. Every, Damn, cause every, chicken, you know, I've been fucking me up. Everything. <laughs> every, like, so, when you, so when you think of fruits, when you think of. You know, most of the things you come in, that you come in contact with, right. 
understand that at the, in, in nature they have to reproduce themselves. Right. A seed is, a grape is no different. It has to reproduce itself. It drops it, you know, the juices, you know, fertilize the ground in a way, then essentially helps support a new new life. That's right. how that's how the circle of life happens. So right. when you don't have those things yeah. in there, that's how you know you're not really taking in the right type of plants, the right type of, uh, you know, in terms of organic um, right. type, of, type of produce. Mm. So as far as this country is concerned, a lot of the food is highly, highly processed. And that is, as a culture, what we have <clears throat> associated ourselves with. And it's also the cheapest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And like that, like that dollar fifty icing. You hungry, starving, boy? You need something to eat. I'm still telling you that there's this. No, no, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit, bro. A bag of apples will. Nah, an apple will get you straight, like for real. That's for real. what I'm saying. Like an apple will do more for you than like a spoon. For, like you said that my teeth hurt. Like I just came out of the dentist, but I'm like my teeth hurt just hearing that, bro. Like yeah, apples, some oranges, some grapefruit. Simple, simple yeah. stuff, bro. And then on top of that, when you look at a plant-based diet, your body naturally reacts and absorbs and does what it does more efficiently than say if you go strictly meat which i would never i would never tell anybody you know increase increase meat intake for two reasons one it digests the slowest yeah out of all yeah. things you can put in your body which puts stresses on your organs right and like slows yeah. down certain functions number two there's so many this is processed so much out here to the point that you know even the leanest piece of steak yeah has the most amount of salt the most amount of fat now is there nutrients <clears throat> and things that you could get from there of course however common space how it's taken into excess right is where it becomes a problem because as an american culture we we take in this food we take in these uh we take in the sustenance at such high rates you don't pay attention <coughs> to the servings you know you eat whole bags of chips as opposed to like three or four you know the the, the idea of a serving label yeah we don't read the bag is like non-existent they're just like you know because if you, if you really thought about I it you like half a bag of chips in it half would be air no 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 i mean it's, it's it's real though like you're not but that's the thing that's that's one of the things we as people we don't choose to do we don't read right, right. and i mean they're doing everything that we advocate for like where's the warning labels where's this right. they do it and then we go back to eating yes. yeah, whole okay. whole thing of Oreos and yeah. wonder why yeah. you know we're, we're sick or why we're upset or whatever the case may be. So. That's very true. No, that's dead serious. I just want to make this clear: the only person with the mask on their face is the person that eats whole things of icing. Fun fact: <laughs> well, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> we all have some weird shit that we do, but that yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of yeah. tops it. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't even think my daughter. Well, no. Not, 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 uh, no, she, she, she does eat a whole, like, things of ice cream, like, uh, no, nah, my daughter, you know, my daughter's, like, she's very, she's very, mm, picky, nah, I wouldn't say picky, I, I say bougie, she, okay. uh, <laughs> so with her, it's seafood, it's crab legs, okay. and, I love yeah, all yeah, that, yeah, so she, she loves, girl's the same way. she says she loves seafood, she loves <clears throat> all the, fa but, I mean, I'm her father, so, you know what I'm saying, my biggest thing is, if you work for it, who am I to tell you you can't have it? So, yeah. so would you recommend like people I my nose. who who do eat meat to if they wanted to go vegan to slowly do it over time or just dive in? No, definitely, because if you if you try to dive in it, you're not your body's gonna go. You're not your body's not gonna be prepared for the adverse say. effects, and then you're gonna be discouraged from it. You're not gonna want to actually commit to it, and then that's gonna deter you. Rather, instead, just supplement certain things out and like switch it out because that's how i did it i started off vegetarian and it got to the point where eggs and dairy were starting to get me very sick okay and so i took that you know listening to my body i was like well, bitch we just got promoted like, going <laughs> vegan today you know so let's see how this goes and you know it's it's been that way ever since so i've been meatless for you know, six years now. Uh, That's good. F what the first year was me as a vegan. The last mm. four has been, or sorry, first year as a vegetarian. The last, you know, five of it has been 
me being a vegan and I, I don't look protein deficient. So that's uh, a big effect on that. And I, I still work out. I still no homo. <laughs> and so I, w I think anybody looking mm. to go into a plant based diet is, should definitely do research, look into what can be supplemented, introduce yourself to it. Just don't go in there and just. Say, I dove go vegan. straight in. Not not vegan, but I, my uh, my New Year's resolution one year was to okay, I'm I'm gonna give up juice. I don't drink soda anyway, so okay. that was already out the water. But I was gonna if I drunk juice it was gonna be organic juice. If I if I didn't like it was just straight water. So it was water organic juice. I got the sickest I've ever been in my life within three months. Mm. Cause I just straight just cold turkey December thirty first, I was like, fuck it. Straight water for like two months and then the last month I started getting to organic juice and then it was like vomiting. Yeah, it, hey, hey, I, I, had I was a, like, oh. Shit. I had a colleague of mine, she said, you know, because I, I was talking about this, uh, one of the detoxes I did, because like I said, in addition to intermittent fasting, at the cellular level, your body's able to recover in a more comfortable environment with less stress from like food and, you know, uh, highly processed substances inside of it. And so I recommended her this detox. <clears throat> it's a really simple shot. It was uh, Himalayan pink salt, uh, warm water, and lime juice. Okay. So and you take it in the morning, right? And if you wanted to hear, if you wanted to hear what happened, she said she, she called me. She's like, Darnell, I will never do that shit again. Yeah. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, What are you talking about? She's like, I look. She's like, I was firing from both ends. Yeah. I was sick. Blah blah blah. But I, I told her I was like, you asked for a detox. So to yeah, detoxify your body when you when you puke and when you defecate, you're removing things from your yeah. body. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now this is somebody mm. that took in highly had a highly processed based diet. They drank, they did not exercise. Mm. So when, you know, those things went into that body, like yeah. everything kind of came up. And I was like, you asked for you asked for something, that's what you got. And you know, when I was starting out on my health adventure, my daughter, like most little girls, right? They'll have these tea parties. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, if you ever have a, if you ever have a, especially a little girl, if you have a little girl, you never say no to nothing, nothing, nothing at all. So she brought out orange soda and Oreos. Dang. I ate. I That's look. A fire I, combination. Just look, FYI. I just look. Look, <laughs> look, I, look, we're sitting here. We, she got her little dolls and stuff like that. You know, I'm 23, 24 at the time. You know, I'm just, I'm really getting into fitness, stuff like that. And I've been eating real healthy. You know what I'm saying? For years now. So it's been years since I even saw what this looks like yeah. in front of my face. <laughs> and I tell you what, I put that sucker in there. There wasn't enough, there wasn't enough water in this country. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was definitely making my offers to the porcelain god that day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all that to say... Yeah, when you when you when you getting your body right, and you want to see how good of a job you're doing, if for whatever reason, go ahead and go back to your old diet. Yeah, that's big. And watch what happens. Well, I'm, hurt like a month. I'm glad that you said that, cause my father, he's actually I forget which it, what it is where you can eat fish. Pescatarian. Yeah. Well, because he barely eats fish, but he like raised us as vegetarians, and he allowed us to eat fish, and like. I'd say up until like middle school, I hadn't even really had meat like that. Yeah. But I, you know, started wanting to, you know, buy my own lunch, trying to be like the other kids. So yeah, yeah. I started eating meat a little bit. Like I used to eat a lot of corn dogs, but I was still mostly vegan. I didn't really start seriously eating meat until I moved out and started going to college. And even now, like I kind of get sick when I eat at certain places, when I eat certain meats and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like I like beef brisket, but that shit makes me sick. Yeah. Like, it's because it, it's, it's yeah. if you think about it, I mean, you're eating another. It's like, I know it's my mom, so don't be worried, y'all. Okay, y'all pull out some shit. I don't, I don't know, know what it is. It's, it's, in my head. it's uh, because <laughs> you're taking in, think about it. I mean, you're taking in a dead corpse, you're yeah. throwing sugar and molasses, and you know, this, this, the sucrose, pretty much sugar and fat, yeah, 
with some coloring on top of it and you're throwing it in your body and not only like I said are you know you know bovine those animals not only do they have the highest amount of salt they have the highest amount of fat content out of any out of most animals right most mammals but then now you're throwing a bunch of the fake shit on top of it. Yeah. And so of course your body's gonna be like, like Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't, look, we didn't did all this surviving for this. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't put an apple in me, motherfucker. Nah, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like Exactly, that's how Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So after now see you're well versed in your know, especially you say you are in school right now? Are you yeah, I, no no I, so I graduate I I, I I achieved my undergrad, I got a biology Congratulations. with a minor in chem from UNT Dallas. I'm currently doing my MPH at Baylor University. Wow. Um, yeah, and that is, no, nah, that is, you know, I'm in my, I'm running, I'm, I'm one of the team members, team leaders right now for a proposal, and that's been going really good, um, and right now with coronavirus, and so in public health, in epidemiology, <laughs> uh, coronavirus is like the new hot thing, so, re you know, people are trying to get this research and yeah. get this done as quick as they exactly can. is it? Because I'm not... It's, it's, I'll tell you this, it's not new. It's not. It's not new It's not all. new. So, you have... So, <clears throat> in a very... Without getting out the chalkboard and the, you know, the micro books and whatnot, so really what you're talking about is an upper respiratory virus that when your body fights most infections, what are the things that... What are the one of the things that the doctors look for? They look uh, uh, white T cells, oh. white lungs. white blood cell count, yeah. Yeah. right? So with these guys, there is no white blood cell count increase. Mm. So mm. that's really what makes this this coronavirus right now a little more interesting because it's a uh, it's, it's it's related to SARS. Okay. Okay. So, so right that's point. where the branch off mm -hmm. for it comes into comes mm. comes into effect. Is, so you have like MERS and you have SARS and this you have you have this this brand of coronavirus that is closely related to SARS. Right. And so but yeah, it's there's no there's no white blood cell increase. Right. And right now doctors and you know researchers are kinda of like right. you know, what do we you and know what is SARS? SARS, so it's another form of a, a fever. SARS so it's an acute rep it's a, I forget the S stands for, but it's upper uh, acute respiratory Syndrome. Right. So it's all both Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome. Uh, it's it's all it's all things that attack the chest. Like think of it like a pneumonia. Right. Oh okay. Yeah, okay. Um, right now you're making me scared because I'm over here wheezing and shit. That's I mean, fine. I mean, like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm, it's the damn, the I'm telling you right now, it's that damn ice cream. <laughs> ice or ice, 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 in. ice. No, ice, ice in that you eating. You might want to. When last time you had a, a, a scoop? Say Saturday. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Maybe Wednesday or Thursday. It's been about a day. It's good. It's good. It's been about a whole day. Did your teeth? Did your teeth not hurt? Cause that's 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 normal. Yeah, the teeth, teeth have been hurting. Yeah, you might wanna. Yeah. You might wanna stop. Feels chest pains near the heart. See, but what a lot of people don't know is your teeth correlate with your heart also. Mm hmm. Like plaque on your teeth, like can start to build up and clog like your arteries and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. That's crazy. A lot of you research. That? Yeah, there's a lot of research that shows hey, that, that your teeth. That's is. why. That's why. Like your parents I always encourage you go to the dentist. Like go to the dentist. Go to mm -hmm. the doctor. Go to the dentist. <clears throat> the eye doctor. Eh. Mm, that's why we need some can't people. Can't see shit. Like, like this. You know, and it's funny because I, because I, I know Juan follows me. So on Instagram, so I put one of these little posts up there where it talks about like how you just need to be like be honest with the doctor. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're out here saw having unprotected sex and you just smoking copious amounts of marijuana Tell or whatever you're doing, yeah. you need to let so that way people could honestly treat you. Right. You know, because if you're out here talking about oh I don't smoke, cough, cough, yeah, and then, yeah. like you out here with whole your whole right lung collapsing, yeah. they're like, okay. You so, brought up marijuana yeah. though, so. Because marijuana is supposed to be natural, like it's well, very not natural, natural, but smoking, like period, smoking is, is the yeah. best. No, smoking period like deteriorates your lungs basically. Cause see, okay, I smoke. I don't do it that often. That's and it. I'm, look, I'm not here telling nobody. Look, well, I'm I, saying I'm gonna tell you. All I'm gonna tell you is I'm a Californian. Yeah, yeah. and I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm saying I've done, <laughs> yes, I've done it a few times. I'll do it like maybe once every two months or something okay. like that. And the reason why, because I feel some kind of way about smoke. Right. 
right. joining my damn body. Right. And I've spoken to people before, they're like, no, it's all natural. You don't need to be worried about that. I'm right. like, yeah, that just doesn't that. sound right to me. Nah, smoke yeah, is still yeah, smoke. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Marijuana was really, like, it's, you're supposed to consume it, not inhale it. And if yeah. you do inhale it, it's, it's sparingly. It's mm -hmm. not, again, and what we get back to, we get back to excess. Yeah. It's not to excess, especially if you plan on living a very active life. Yes, that is not a very, smoking anything in the main way that your body takes in and expels oxygen right. is that you're you're damaging that. It's like me throwing, you know, a knife at my tires. Yeah. Eventually, something's going to st yeah. yeah. So, um, so you saying Wiz Khalifa needs to stop? No, he be trying. He be doing that first off, Wiz Khalifa could do whatever he want. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not in the position to tell any man. What they need to do with their life, but what I can tell you is that you know, anything, anybody who decides, because you stop your brain development at the age of twenty-five, and once, I mean, once really that happens, you're not losing or gaining any more brain cells. I mean, you lose, you could definitely lose some, but as far as the growth or hindering your growth, that's what you got. Is what you got. Oh, so I need to boy. start reading, boy. I ain't twenty-five yet. Goddamn. So <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Shit. But I, I mean, I'll be reading now. Sorry. No, no, you're good. I read, people. I read. <laughs> but I definitely, I definitely would say that you know, <clears throat> marijuana has been around for a very long time. Right. Now, when you, like I said earlier, where you have cultures, you have you have bars in other countries that are older than this country. They've right. been dealing with things a little bit longer. So you mm. got in, in in retrospect, in, in a global aspect, America is like a teenager. Yeah. You That's know. True. And you got Africa, which is kind of like everybody's, the, the grandparents, grandmother. the grandmother, basically, kind of like, now, I and remember back in my day, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we did this, but, you know, you gotta, it, it, it's sparing, it's, 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 it's about moderation at right. the end of the day, you know, if you do anything to excess, it'll kill you. That's, right. That's anything. You can't drink too much water, you'll drown. You That's, sure will. Better tell your girl, quit eating, quit, hey, she ain't got, you ain't got to eat right every day, you'll drown. I don't know about that one. I'm gonna be that one alone. Well, but uh, no, nah, I mean, I don't personally feel like marijuana is any. If anything, it's you don't have signs of withdrawals. That I haven't seen anything that would really. Now I'm not saying go out there and just go smoke pounds of it a day, right? Because you will have yeah, you effects to it. You can't OD on marijuana. However, what I will say is like, you know, the same way people, you know, drink in moderation. I believe that when it comes to marijuana, it's something that should be taken into with moderation. You know, you don't have to be, you know, every day is my birthday. Cool. But you probably don't need to be smoking every day either because, you know, you got to be able to function to, at some sort of, at some level with some consistency. Right. You know, so I'm all for it. So, you know. Not that my daughter's watching this, but if my kid ever came to me and was like, Hey, Dad, I smoke. Yeah. Let me see it. You know, I'm going to look at it. I'm gonna, You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay, this is... This is shit. Because this is probably yeah. what you got your hands on. Yeah. And, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta be honest. You got to be transparent. You got to say, Hey, this is... These, these, are the, these are the things that come with it. These, right. are the, these are the pluses. These are the minuses. Here's what happens when you do it to excess. Here's why not to use rolling papers. Because right. you have... Because when you use blunts and things like that, like papers, like actual cigar papers, that's still tar yeah. getting into your lungs. Yeah. And I think that's what hurts the most is because it's a heavier, it's not mm. really the weed you're smoking, you're smoking the tar. The that tar, tar along yeah. with it and it's sticking to your lungs. Yeah. So whereas the medicinal effects of marijuana, you know, because it, it has been proven to combat anxiety, uh, help with concentration, and, you know, help alleviate some of the effects of PTSD and right. post traumatic other post traumatic traumas, you're not really also looking into, you know, how are how am I getting this in my body? Right. So that's that, those are the things I would concern myself with. Now as far as, you know, le making a plant illegal, I think that's more politics than it is like rationale because alcohol is we in Texas, we can go outside, see forty billboards with a with a whole Corona bottle, yeah. a Bud Light bottle, or whatever, and they'll promote it all day. But the, what they'll say is moderation. So if you are, you know, somebody that smokes, someone that partakes, there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you get your priorities and you, you moderate. 
in an effective way where it doesn't inhibit your function, it right. doesn't stop you from your priorities, and you know, you don't get the, you're not becoming a glutton. Right. That's real. I'm sorry, I got blood my nose again. No, you good. It's that coronavirus. <laughs> I'm saying, like, it's, it's, again, it's, it's moderation, bro. You're not, like, you're, when I think of, when, again, very limited understanding of, like, evolutionary biology, right? But from my understanding, like, you're not, there's, I want you to show me where icing grows on a tree. It doesn't. So why are you taking it in? You know, like, and that's, that's really, you I know. I think this is how it started off. <laughs> it started off when I was in my apartments last year, mm -hmm. and I didn't have no money. I was I was hungry. So hey, been there. I was at Walmart, seen that dollar fifty, and I was like, hmm, let me see what that is real quick. Hey, I'm, like, I'm a little <clears throat> full. Cool. And ever since then, we we'll also helped. Okay, the guy four packs of noodles. That wasn't the start. <laughs> ramen, but, but see, ramen, ramen is the worst for you. There's yeah, nothing. Yeah. I don't think ramen That's is plastic, worse man. than you don't have. Icing. You don't have to think. I know it is. Look, there is. That is like. Look, they're both bad. Let's let's let's, let's agree on no, that. No, no, that's 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 agreed upon. But I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's worse than a tub of icing. It, it, agreed. I, I agree. Like a tub of icing is like. It's not a tub. It's like a little, small little can. tub. It's a small, <laughs> tub, like, it's literally a, a small tub. That's how it's. A, that's how you address I, it. I, I, I'm not here to pick on you over here. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of it also, because you have to like. I'm glad my father taught me. He like taught me how to shop, mm -hmm. like for groceries and stuff before I left. Shit. Like he, because he was like, I don't want you going off to college and you're just living off of ramen noodles. That's not good for you. Let me take you to the grocery store and show you how to actually like yeah. budget and what to go for. Like a lot of people, they go for stuff that's pre-made, but the thing is, you're paying extra for that because it's pre-made and saving mm -hmm. you more time. Whereas if you go and you get certain things, it might cost a little bit more than like getting a tub of icing, right. but it'll last you longer if you preserve it correctly. You want to know? You some crazy? Yeah. Uh, my my friend, he, he so good dude. His name is also one, but with the, the with the J, and uh, you know I was telling him about <laughs> bless you. He uh, he was talking to me about how like so he's he's from Mexico. Right. So mm -hmm. He's from from Mexico, and he said I never understood why Americans would go out and get a seven dollar you know container yeah. of pineapples, mm -hmm. but a whole pint and they're paying for half, maybe half of it. Yeah. But a whole pineapple right there is like maybe two dollars. All you have to do is chop it down. Exactly. And so that's <clears throat> extra money in, you know what I'm saying, in there. And But like I said, it goes back to, as a culture, what are we incentivized? What are we promoting? We're, we, you know, we're talking about convenience. We're talking about efficiency. We're talking about less thinking required with, because if people want to eat, they want to eat now. Yeah, exactly. You know, so if you tell, if I throw a whole pineapple at a kid and I said, Hey, this is the only thing. Eventually, you're gonna figure something I out. But like, mean. for some people, they're gonna <clears throat> they're gonna be yeah, starving. They're gonna, look at they're gonna be starving. Might not even know it's a pineapple. Yeah, what the hell is this? Yeah, yes. you can give me food. Yeah. I, I asked for a cheeseburger. You over here give me pineapples yeah. and oranges. Trying to buy you. Yeah. 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 But like that's 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 unfortunately that's the type of society we have now. Like yeah. if I threw a, again, if I threw an orange, I threw a pineapple, I threw a dragon fruit. I threw some type of produce. Yeah. And a banana. Something. And they a lot of people a lot of people would starve. Yeah. That's crazy. I look you think I'm allergic to bananas. I might be a little bit. I small still be eating them bitches. They make my mouth fuzzy Is like you know, after after a while. Fuzzy, okay. It makes my top of my mouth itch a little bit. Yo, yeah, like, like, like that. Like yeah. Okay. Well the ass because I sneeze, bro, and I fucked up and my my whole mass is nasty right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I was going to say, because um, as I know, you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. I've noticed like in other cultures, there's less of a focus on like spending all this damn time at work mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, slaving away for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's more focused on like being around your family and mm -hmm. providing for your family. In Actually the having of, a culture. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Actually, And I think, you know. Part of the reason why Americans want everything quickly is because they feel like they got to rush to, you know, go to work, rush to, you know, take their kids to school, that type mm -hmm. of thing. So, I mean, is that, in your opinion, like, 
a huge difference between what we have here and what we have in other countries? Oh yeah, definitely. So there's Sundays. The so in Germany the stores are not restaurants are not allowed to be open until after five o'clock on Sundays, against the law. Really? You know, uh, certain stores, <laughs> certain depending on what type of services, they may have to fill out some extra paperwork. But for the most part. Yes, being at home with your family is essential. A priority. That's that, that. That's it. And you know, another thing about being in, at these other parts of the world Let me see is it. you get to see like. Let me show you something. The coronavirus is on here somewhere. What? And we can get into that conversation after the camera too. So I already know. I, 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 yeah, I already know where he's going with it. Oh, so let me go and put this back in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, you you. God damn. That's a big difference between Herpes. the American culture <laughs> and everybody else. Is like yeah, it's the focus it on is. family. It's the focus on quality time with your kids. And yeah. so when the kids come out for the summer, oh, that's how you know. That's how you the get virus is. You get that time to be with them. To be with yeah. them, you know, when they go to school, it's it's, cu it's culturally acceptable to go out and like walk your kids to school, like on the first day. They want you yeah. to do that because you know, uh, at the end of the day, that's your life. Like, yeah, you're doing things to help support this country, but you're here to also make the most support out of your, your life family. and support your family and spend time with your family. Um, Another another fun feature. So in Germany, you know, I hear Christmas starts on the Christmas Day is the twenty fifth. Mm. In Germany? No, no, no. In, in the in states. The country. Christmas out there starts on the twenty fourth. On the twenty fifth, it's like it's it's it goes. You spend time with your family. You go out and visit. Your extended family, and then you go hang out with like your friends. Mm -hmm. So it's a three-day process. Yes, I like yeah. that. But like the first day, family. family, your family. Second day is then you get to go spend time with like your mom, your grandma, your know, oma, or whatever. <clears throat> then you get to go out and like, cause stores ain't stores. Stores aren't open. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And out here, because mm -hmm. we 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 pride ourselves on the convenience, but one thing we don't address really is like. That convenience has to come at a price. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, in order for, you know, that 24 hour delivery service, you know, one may have to be here doing this. Yeah. Like, okay, you know, yeah. doing something, but that, 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 that takes away from life. Right. You know what I'm saying? That takes away from what your true, that true passion. Right. You have is, and that's where you, that's where you get into depression, really. You, mm -hmm. when you look at the mental, when you talk about that and you talk compare it to other countries and then you talk about <coughs> mental health issues. Yeah. Like we're we, we yeah, have yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're we're up there because we're working all day, we're getting very little sleep, we're being told to compromise our dreams and our goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And settle for, like you said, a very substandard way of making money. But also you gotta remember in this country the unwritten sin is not being able to work you know um i was fortunate enough to where i basically took 12 years of my life as collateral so i don't have to work um and i'm retired because of it however like that was 12 years in the military mm -hmm. yeah you know and a lot of people don't have that and so although they make a lot of money they're not very happy. Right. Yeah. And so, you know what I'm saying? They don't get to see their kids grow up. They don't get to spend time with their family. You don't get to hang out with, you know, your lady friends or your friend or wh whatever people are into. You know, I, I don't know what people are into nowadays. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but people just need to, that's why I said, as black people, we need to travel. We need to educate ourselves. It not just what, you know, the jo what the Joneses are doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to really get out there and... See what the world can have. It has to offer because it is yours. It's just a matter of how bad do you want it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's real. I see you have your, your Omega uh your Omega fraternity on right. BQ now. dog. Respect on. Um, 
Rude eye. Now, let me ask you this. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think now, I know where you're also ask Francis as well. Okay. <clears throat> when people say um, Greek fraternities is not our culture. Okay. What is your response to that? Greek fraternities is not, not black people culture. They're not black people culture. In what context? <clears throat> so are you talking about what the, the principles embodies is not our culture because education, because empowerment, uplifting, these are all things, and in your perseverance, these are all things that are our culture. Great. You know, so I believe the branding of it and how it's perceived right. mm. is not, you're right, it's a double edged sword. I believe the branding and how it's perceived is not the culture. Right. And I would dare say that. The, the 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 people who have those negative things to say one they've never really talked to someone thoroughly immersed right. into the why they you know they're in these organizations <coughs> number one number two um, education upliftment perseverance empowering right. ourselves as young black men yes these are all things that have been a part of our culture exactly. so when I hear things like that I'm confused because. Yes. Granted, I don't need letters or colors to make me any less or any more of a black man. However, to be around other black men who share my same my same goals, right. not necessarily my same goals, but my same ideals, mm -hmm. my same virtues, my same principles, Sentiments. that's uplifting. And those are our community. That's 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 black to me. Yeah. That's as black as you can get. Beautiful. That's real. That's real. And also see that you know you are still in, in college right now, uh, get working on your masters. Mm -hmm. How is it balancing? I ain't trying to ask you too many questions. I know you. No, no, you good, you good, dog, you good. Um, how is it balancing education while also managing dreams and goals and aspirations? That's a good question. Well, those are things that should be one and the same. So I think mm. where people have to separate it, or oftentimes when people have to separate their goals and their dreams. And the priorities is because they're in a profession that they settled for. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not everybody aspires to flip burgers, right. deliver packages, whatever. Your life has more. That's, those are service positions, which is nothing wrong with that. Right. But I do believe that at the end of the day, we aspire for more. Right. You know, again, I'm in a very... And I, I was talking with a good friend of mine. name's Desmond Burton. Know. Um, I've known him... Since 2013, 14, we went, to, we went to Afghanistan together. Really great guy. I love him to death. Um, and we often, he, we often have these conversations. And so what it usually boils back down to is you are in a point in your life where you have, you've worked for everything to be in alignment, right? right. I'm in a position where <clears throat> I'm doing what I love. I love the sciences. I love martial arts. Right. I love my daughter. You know what I'm saying? I'm able to be around all those things at once. I'm able to support events like this and movements like this where people get to see the uh, the black man, the African, you know, the Asiatic black man in rare form as a, as a collegiate scholar, as a, somebody that's just not, you know, nothing wrong with the entertainment, but right. I think... To the point where that those are our only those are perceived as our only outlets. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a problem because that's not representing all black people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you have people that are cultured. You have people that are diverse. You have people with <clears throat> a wealth of information, but sometimes we do ourselves in. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm a firm believer that you know the enemy can't do nothing to us that we aren't willing to do to one another. That's right. And so, you know, before old Whitey gets to us, he's. Hit the 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 ace in his the ace in his, up his sleeve is well y'all do it to each other yeah. so you know but as far as balancing these things out <clears throat> it's one, for me it's one and the same right. I'm not I'm not veering so far off from my goals and things that I want to do with my life because again I I had to put twelve years of my life as collateral to this country so that now I'm in a position where I can focus on my education I can travel the world I can Really, you know, the old Scarface, I don't, the old Nas song, like, right. the world is the yours. World is, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, I, I, so not, you know, because that's like my favorite rapper, that's Nas. my favorite entertainer, absolutely. Um, 
Not Lil Nas X. I came. Nah, Lil Nas X. I <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah. who this other Nas is. I know who NAS. Nas Escobar. With yeah. yeah. I, you know, when that song came out and that album came out, like that really hit me. Mm -hmm. That was Illmatic, right? It was yeah. sure was. Yeah. That's a good album. It's a great album. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like <clears throat> that that sentiment that really stuck to me and then I saw Scarface. Yeah. And to me where the song and the the song introduced it, but like to me movies like Scarface, it really showed, you know, and it might be the, the a terrible example, but here's how I'm gonna spin it. It shows the work that's necessary to make the world yours. Now if you do it in a grimy way, you're gonna have some grimy outcomes. However, you got to put that work in. If right. The world's really yours. You know, you're on it, but it doesn't mean it's going to be given to you. You got to yeah. go out and seek it. You got to go out and get in, you, get yeah, in those Tony, uncomfortable places. You know, Tony went for his. Hey, that. get yeah. it how you live, dog. And he and I think that's. <clears throat> I think some people take that term and it, it's it's a very loose translation. Right. You know, um, it shouldn't. I think what I learned the most from that movie. Now that we're mentioning it's it. Face. Yes. Yes. You know, you can't, like, everything has, everything has a price. Mm -hmm. Everything in life, no matter what it is that you want, you can come from, you know, flipping burgers and tacos and <clears throat> you out here doing, you know, de what was it, a desk of blow? There's a yeah. whole desk yeah. of blow. Dog did you look, yeah. wasn't even no, <laughs> yeah. no cut, just, mm. yeah, no. <laughs> he, just he just got yeah. it, you know. No, so he, like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, just, he just yeah. hoovered the whole damn desk, but like, you know. You gotta get it how you live, you know, and but you can't. You gotta do it in a way where you grow from it. See, if you if you if you're you're getting all these resources and you're growing, but you're not helping nobody. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're just you're growing in you're growing into that stigma. You're growing into something that isn't helpful to those around you. You're not positively impacting those. The universe has a way of checking all that. Right. You know, I think had he had made a little more adjustments, probably quit. Quit doing so much damn coke, uh, and that white girl alone. That was yeah, you know, he had been he'd been all right, but <laughs> you know, he had morals, he had things that was going for. It. He just went about it in a very aggressive way, and I think that type of tenacity yeah. is really lacking now. You know, we're tenac we have tenacious behavior when asserting ourselves around other black men, but when it comes to uplifting and you know, aspiring for goals. We're very Luke. We, right. we we lack that, you know. We come. We have the excuses, and I don't think that's fair, especially if you plan to live a very long life, which a lot of African Americans do. But it's with conditions. You have heart conditions. You have diabetes. You have. I'm like the icing on. You have these complications <laughs> that hinder your full potential. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so once we get past that as individuals, then we'll already be able to better you know, unite and yeah. uplift each other and, like, make more progressive steps. But right now, I mean, we're going to continue to be divided because people benefit off of it and no one sees the incentive. No one sees anything to help incentivize it. Right. Exactly. There's more things to actually incentivize you being separate. <clears throat> I'm not saying it's correct. I'm just saying what's out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So when you compete, do you have an opening uh, song already? Or no, 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 no. So this is a this is a, this is a tournament base. So it's not. It's, although I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on the stage, but it's gonna be like eight. The way it's set up is like you know here's a set of mats, here's a set of mats, here's another set of mats. So you are competing in strictly Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, not UFC. Correct, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's real. Damn. And so yeah. it is, you know, it's gonna be maybe eight mats. So four on each side. They're pretty widespread out. It'll be in Irvine, California. Um, it'll be on March 26th. That's real. Okay. And it's the, uh, it's the Pan American, so it'll be the 2020. I'll be fighting at Super Heavy. Man, if I had known a little bit sooner, probably would came out. No, I mean, it, it's... Say we might still go out. No, I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's, it sounds like yeah, South by Southwest. Southwest so. Where's Irvine at? Is that near Los Angeles? Or? Okay. Yeah, see, we'll be downtown LA. Yeah, so, it, I mean, you could definitely you could catch it on... And I'll make sure to post it that way people have access to it. It'll be a, uh, it'll be. I haven't fought in a tournament in three years. Really? But that's just because you know my professors were really adamant about once I came back from Germany. They said you need to get your education. Right. Damn that's everything right. else. Get your education because like. 
BJJ professor. Yeah, my BJJ professors, my coaches, and I guess mm. that's what I was saying earlier. As far as influences, I have so many to pull from for so many different reasons. It's right. hard to pick just one. Um, but Octavio and Greg both set me down and was like, "Hey, um, get your fucking undergrad degree. Yeah. Like, get that degree, get that now. Um, still come to train. Yeah. You're still going to train. Yeah. But just know that that degree is priority. Right. That is, you know, you." You, you could always be a champion. You could always, we could always drill you, work you hard so you get a medal around you. Right. But you being a doctor, you being an influence mm -hmm. to the sciences, that's a small window. Right. And so let's get you in there. They supported it. Um, we did that for three years. I got my undergrad. I got into the graduate program. And I'm able to effectively fight. Right. And, you know, get this tournament in the States for, this would be my... I might do this one. I'm definitely going to do Pan Ams. I might do one more, but after that, that'll be all that I do in the States. The rest of my fights will be overseas. back in Europe, yes. That's beautiful, man. We're going to have to talk some more about that in Europe, man. You know, I tell you. Uh, especially, I've been hearing a lot of uh, you know, uh, European women like black men out there. Yes, that is. Him. Yes. Even Desmond was telling me about y'all adventures over there in Germany one time. I was dying at the stuff y'all were telling. Oh, bro! Like I, that could be a whole another podcast. <laughs> that could be a, that could be a whole another session. Darnell, Dulo's adventures throughout Bavaria, dog. Like how do you go out there? I do. I'm out there nine months out of the year. Me? Let me know you go. I go out there. I be I be traveling, man. Yeah. Hey, come through. I came from Israel last year, so okay. Let me go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm out there. I'm out there nine months out of the year, but yes, that that is that is not a rumor. Uh, that is very much alive. Yeah, and yeah. That is very much alive. Hey, um, baby, I love you. I love you. <laughs> but you're now foreign. <laughs> I, don't I, wanna get, I don't want to get nobody in trouble. Yeah, I'm, I say that. I'm not trying to get nobody mess up anybody happy home. But as far as black men in in Germany specifically. <clears throat> um, you are welcomed. Yeah. And yeah. that is that is me putting it to you delicately in yeah. respect to everybody's situation. I don't know yeah. who's in what over here, but if you go to Germany... I'm, I'm off the market. There you go. I mean... I love my lady. Hey, don't get, don't, get single, so go, look, don't get me. Hey, don't get me. Hey, don't get me. Don't get me. Don't get me. Don't get me. Your lady go find my Instagram and track me yeah. down and... I don't be like, why are you looking at this man Instagram in the first place? Okay. Yeah, that's how you <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> see, 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 that's why I'm looking at Germany women right there. That's how I got still caught up. Good no, I can't get nobody. <laughs> like, I wouldn't want it to happen to me, so. I'm like, see, I already said their hands are big. No one is, you know what I'm saying? Like, the whole <laughs> But no, nah, Germany, Germany's good. I think, like I said, another reason for black people to... People in general need to travel more. Yeah. Just like you said, you see how the people are living. It's not just yeah. things out here that you're limited to. Right. You know, you have a whole globe. Yeah. And I think the passport, what that does is it opens that yeah. for you. Yeah. So definitely go out and travel. Please, please go out and travel. Not just to Mexico. Don't go to South Padre. Yeah. Go to no, go. Jamaica. I've seen you post yeah. Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Black, pe black people, we got to stop going to Jamaica when we get our passports. Not saying we can, that could be... We got to stop going, but that can't be the only place. You yeah. have to say Jamaica is beautiful. Yeah, that can't be the only place we go halfway. when we go. It's halfway beautiful. That can't be the only place we go to when we get our passport. We got to go to Barbados. We got to go to the Dominican Republic, Haiti. Israel. You I got know, family. You got to go to Africa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to go to all these different yeah. places. and You got to see how black people are living because we everywhere, bro. Yeah, That's dude. what I'm saying. Like, when I'm telling you this black Germans is, you know... Is it dark skinned Italians, <clears throat> the Brazilians, like we're everywhere. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I like that. I like that. I'm not looking at it. So I said, man, you come, you what? <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, lady. <laughs> we we gonna be he he'll, he'll train me out there, that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Going to the gym. Um I would one day, man, we might have to one day it's time to go to the gym. We we next train. And yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Okay, so yeah, yeah. so Monday is gonna be the next time I'm gonna be out. Um, so Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Those are the days. You be in the gym. That I'm in Octagon, and then you know my active rest days are really my Sundays, but that's really just like light jogs yeah. and stuff like that. But can we train up there too? 
train up there. Um, oh, you gotta just be like. No, 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 no. So here's what I told Juan. I said, getting the videos and stuff like that's not an issue. Right. But everybody's in fight mode right now. Yes. So like, you may get your ass beat if you want to spark. I, 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 you know, I, I, I put that out there. You, you heard your, your friends. I saw like the last five minutes of it. And they weren't playing. Like I said, I went in there. I was like, what the hell is that smell? Like that was sweat. Yeah. 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 There's also some blood. There's, there's also there's also some blood. Yeah. There. I, I can... smell blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was blood and sweat on those some of those masks. But everybody is working really hard. We're all working really hard to get ready for Houston opens. There's some Dallas opens coming up. There's mm. a lot of us that are traveling to California to go fight in these really big really really high level tournaments right so you know definitely come by if you want to ask questions things like that of course um as far as going out to what i call you know general population right i would definitely make sure that somebody sits you guys aside and you guys go over stuff yeah. in a safe controlled part of it because yeah he saw the last five minutes of it and to me that was like everybody like chilled out yeah yeah yeah. So was, like, yeah they were chill but like they were going in. it was intense yeah because like, yeah. i was even telling him i was like you know he's in good shape i've been to the gym with him before he works out pretty frequently and he was like shit there's big dudes to get their asses whooped in there all the time so Thanks. like Thanks. that don't mean yeah. <laughs> hey so. jujitsu ju we are very known for empowering you know the smallest person yeah against the biggest you know the david and goliath of jujitsu, and I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, no, this is really it. Yeah, like yeah. It, to me, in my in my yeah. mind, because I've went against defensive linemen, yes, who came in and do jujitsu, and they're strong for days. You Texans, I don't I don't know what they feed them. If it's just William chickens and cornmeal, yeah, it's, it's the cornbread. I I don't know what they feed y'all out here, but some so, some bread. of these it's cornbread and hot pockets. I don't know what it is, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 they huge. Yeah. yeah. And then, so they're strong for days, and I'm not saying it's easy, but it's definitely to the point where it's manageable. Right. You know, to have a, have a, have a smaller opponent that doesn't have the same strength. Mm -hmm. Right. And that person being successful. Yes. Um, and so, yes, when you do come by, we'll definitely make sure that you're not a part of that that way again at the end of the day your safety is taken into consideration yeah. and you're able to i'm gonna tap out so you, have, you can have an experience Hold on now. you know yeah. um but definitely come out i do believe you know despite all the scariness i you know i want to promote brazilian jiu-jitsu for what it is it's it's a beautiful way to actively meditate yeah. and I'm help get rid of a lot of somebody. problems <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm gonna say we gotta, we gotta take a picture man but i want you to, to to kill me i'm gonna do one of the toko pictures man yeah, 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 yeah I got you. Me. No, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna kill you. I'm gonna be five seconds later. Dude. I might be, look, I might be ten pounds lighter, but <laughs> we'll be good. Like, look, you'll be, you'll be good, dog. But yeah, man, definitely come through. I think, and that's another thing too. As black people, we need to get into, you know, learning how to defend ourselves and not being, not. We gotta quit playing these victim roles. You know, we have to learn how to shoot these weapons. We have to learn how to pick up a martial arts, and it doesn't have to be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right. I would recommend. Whatever attracts you, I like you know. Time. Yeah, and we. I want to do jujitsu upstairs. And we and we have those we have those services there at Octagon MMA, you know. Um, but definitely, <clears throat> definitely, that has to be something that we do yeah. as a community because there's only so much because everybody else is fighting in something. Right. That's right. Everybody's doing something else, but you know my 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 reasoning for it is it always goes back to science. Right. If all you're doing is just growing, right. but you're not def you're, you're not able to defend your DNA because right. as yeah. you're growing, you're taking in food. Mm. Years go by, you're growing your your cells and all that stuff. Everything's maturing. It. So if you're not doing anything to protect it, what does that make you? A target. It yeah. makes you food. Yeah. Oh, duh. For Pretty something much. else yeah. Yeah. that can not only grow and develop mm. and preserve their bio you know, their biology. Yeah. But if I need to take that from somebody. There's little defense. Right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, if nothing else, know that without that defense component, if you're not able to preserve right. your DNA, your your biology, you're just food for somebody else who can. Definitely. You know, you got to get into, we got to get, you know, not just into the sports, not just into the, for the entertainment, for the money, but because it's something that we need to do to preserve ourselves. It's necessary. Every... 
every every form of organism on this planet has some sort of way of defending itself. Right. Except for us. No, not necessarily. Well, I mean, let me put it this way: that we're the only ones who basically raise our kids to be food. Not me. I mean, we do. I think. I think in terms of defense, I think a lot of it comes to, back to education, religion. Uh, you know, tool. I think. I think parents, at the end of the day, only could offer you the tools that they know how to use. Mm. But you know, that's just that's just how that's just how it is sometimes. But yeah, definitely get into a martial arts, learn how to shoot a weapon. You know, learn how to preserve yourself so that you don't become susceptible because you don't like we talked about earlier we don't know what what the world is out there how it has to and what we may have to endure or deal with but but we can't find ways to protect ourselves and i feel like that's also important so in addition to education in addition to being around you know like-minded individuals we have to be able to preserve ourselves right because as a man you are not able to protect the ones that you love your family your household if you don't know nothing, you know, and that might be something I'm not educated on if there's no other ways, but, you know, I grew up using these. Right. That's why they're big as they are. Like, they're actively being used since as long as I can remember. But, like, you know, um, I have to defend those who I love. Yeah. I have to defend my daughter. I have to defend my people. Right. And if I can't do that with words, you know, yeah. where words may fail, force is necessary. Yeah, so. Sure. One last question before we go. Okay. You're going to say something about this last song. It looks like last song. I know it's taking the coronavirus, like YT pointed out. Oh, it really does say that? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right one is. of the things it prevents, yeah. Yeah. That's how long that shit's been. So around. there is, so fun fact, and you can go ahead and look, the, you can look this up as I'm talking about it, if you don't mind. We have, this country has a patent to a, ver a form of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. What? Look it up. No. Hey, go ahead and Google. Go ahead, look, Google it. Oh, we, have a, I said. we have a patent, but the one that's currently running around now, yeah, that they say that's not it. Yeah, and I'm gonna leave it at that. It's created by Gilead or Gilead. That's right. That's right. Dude, I yeah. also yeah. there's I'm a patent saying. on AIDS. I could See, be wrong. And but... the crazy thing is, uh, you know Yoda. Yoda was an active military member uh, for probably about 15, 12 years. And he said that the military was the first creators of the coronavirus, like a, a form of it. And then it, you know, yeah. got out of hand, got into the, the wrong people, and then it was released. So mm. I, that patent, that, that would make sense. If you create something, you have but to that's create not, the opposite. To but that's, I mean, that's, that's now there's a yeah. form, but the, now the one that's going around and doing all this other stuff. Yeah, that's not it. That's not it. Right. But okay. we there is a patent, as you can see, on the back of there. So y'all, you know We yeah. have a patent for it. Yeah. That is, that there is, that is a whole fun fact about that. And yo, look at your lifestyle, Bob. <laughs> and um, I like I pointed and keyed out like he said earlier. Research. The man does crazy research. You ain't never gonna get the type of knowledge this king has acquired he's, over nine months and thirty four years. <laughs> he's the type of dude that'll beat your ass, then explain to you why he had to beat your See, ass. Yeah, like, like, you, move you, know, you know what's sad? you know what's sad? I've actually had to do that in <laughs> my life. <laughs> and we could talk about that off camera, but yeah. like there 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 were points in my younger days I'd be like all this could have been avoided had you just like let yeah. Me yeah. Like, yeah 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 you know like I asked if you could move yeah. at least quit stepping on my shoes yes yeah. knocked my drink oh, no, at this point it's disrespectful yeah I'm trying to figure out if you had a bad day like yeah. I'm really trying to avoid yes. all all measures like of here's the research as to why I had to beat you and ass. this is before <laughs> jujitsu yeah. keep in mind this is before so once jujitsu came in I'm like damn I might actually once you started learning like, damn I might actually hurt somebody. Yeah. I mean, I was hurting people before, but now when you're taking out shoulders and yeah. whole limbs, you're like, I might actually to be dangerous. I, let, let me let me calm down for a minute and see <laughs> no, what's, wait, no. <laughs> what's happening. But yeah, man, I again that could be a, that could that that's a whole other discussion. We could talk about you know young 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 Darnell's crazy adventures throughout Europe and yeah. All that fun stuff. We we have a what was was it? Dave Chappelle's was it? Oh, Holly true Hollywood story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, part two coming soon. Y'all better stay tuned. 
Man, thank you so much. Uh, I don't, I don't know if you want to shake my hand because I've been coughing. Nah, you good, Johnny. But you know what I'm I saying. I appreciate it. I uh, YT, Juan. Um, mm. So, again, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your journey. He's a very business, very busy king. You better understand. He is <laughs> very professional. So if you ain't on time, you might as well go ahead and get yourself right, cause you probably missed him, and you better not miss a golden duck, cause when it's here, you want some golden eggs. You, you copped out because he wasn't on no time. Now, thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, thanks so much. Always, always. BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Underscore? That's Darnell Davis. Darnell Davis, underscore. Underscore BJJ, BJJ yeah. on Instagram. I was so close. <laughs> but still, <laughs> that's actually, you know, that's really, I never even thought you BJJ. You follow, you, oh, you follow me. I know, I know, but I know what BJJ stands for too. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, dog. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really lit, though, man. Are you put me on some stuff today, man? I I, I thank you for coming, bro. You, you, Always, man. It's I, good I, to find real kings. Here, I support. I support, and I, I've known. I've had the privilege of knowing Juan for many, many years. Actually, as soon as, uh, and this could be, you know, the after, you know, the little special features afterwards. Yeah. You know? So how I met Juan, you know, we met through Chris, and I was. I mean, I was just tunnel visioned yeah. mm -hmm. on getting a garden on the yard, trying to get my research in. I'm, I'm doing, I was doing research as a, I came into, I came into UNT Dallas with certifications that like my IRB later realized was like, why did you have that? Yeah, yeah. IRB. Uh, internal review board. Yeah. So pretty much <laughs> anybody that, you know, you do surveys and interact with humans whenever you do your research, it's... These are the people essentially you have to go through. And, you know, Juan and I talked and it was just, we had very similar ideals and goals about progression for, well, first off, I had my Pan-African uh, wristband that, yeah. on me. And usually that does two things. That exposes coots. Yeah. <laughs> and it exposes the real. Yeah. Yeah. I get to see both, and I detour one over the other. That's so right. you know, I you know I'm talking with Juan. He he's like, hey man, I want to help with this garden. Like, what can we do? So I remember us digging out one summer, and we over here getting all these roots up and stuff. They, you know, the school ended up having to. It came back to a contract, so we wasn't able to get that garden. Um, but at the end of the day, it was it was always about knowledge. It was always about just progressive thinking and just having that exposure of other black people outside of the stigma, outside of the sports, outside, you know, he never mm -hmm. met me as, you know, the athlete. He never met me as, you know, I, you know, I came from this D1 school. I do No, 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 no. He met me as an intellect. And I think as black people, that's something that we have to be more comfortable with yeah. doing when we meet people. I don't need to know how many girls you lay down and all that. That's, that's fun information. That's sidebar yeah. talk. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, what 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 is what is your idea of power? What is your what is your goals? How do you perceive success? You know right. what I'm saying? What as a as a brother, what can I do to support your you through your endeavors and your yeah. goals? And these are things that like you very rarely get to talk with because not a lot of people share that. Not even people not many people are aspiring for those things. So I'm very fortunate. Uh because I've actually had interview, I've had requests to do interviews and podcasts like this, and I've turned them all down because, you know, I'm a firm believer if I got time to do interviews, I got time to do these little photos and all that, I got time to work. Yes, mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in and out of the country now a lot more. Um, and when Juan reached out, I was like, absolutely, absolutely. I, and I told him I felt really bad. I had to, we had to push it yeah, to, to, no to, to, to this week. But, you know, Juan's a really, really positive brother. He, he He's going to make and be critical for a lot of changes in the near future in my personal opinion so as yep, much I, as I agree with you. you know you guys are you know I'm, and I'm thankful to be here and I'm thankful that I have always had support from guys like Juan like I've never been you know the I've never been the normal guy yeah. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying I don't even come in to a situation with normal people energy they're just yeah. you know bros met me yeah. the first time it yeah. was like you off. Like, what's yeah. wrong with you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry, like, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, like, they're like, you don't eat, bro, it's like, you don't eat meat? Yeah. yeah. You mess with white women? Some, what, 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 there has to be something wrong with you. Well, I'm like, no, this is just, this is who I am. And so, you know, when you have support from guys like Juan, you got support from guys like Chris, you know, Keo Gamble, um, 
you know, these influential people who spend a long, a lot of time around people day in, day out, and they say, like, there's something unique about this person. I want to support them. And the energies presented in return the same way, it's a beautiful thing. Right. And so, you know, when we talk about unity and we talk about support for black men, people of color, those are, who are having to endure, we got to make sure that we exemplify and we demonstrate what that looks like because although we could promote it and we could push it to everybody, if we're not leading the example, if we're not demonstrating that example, ultimately it's just wasted air. Mm. You know, and I didn't want to hold you up, but I want to say this regarding you and Chris and Keo and all those dudes. Like, I kind of look up to y'all. Like, if y'all know me, you know, like, I'm a prideful, stubborn type of guy. I don't just listen to anybody. But I listen to him when he talks. I listen to Chris. Exactly. You haven't met Keo yet, man. No, I I, he was the dude I was telling you about. He was a part of UGK. Oh, I yeah, want to yeah, get yeah, him yeah. on here yeah, next. Yeah. But I listen to Keo. I listen to LaTerrence. Those are guys that I listen to. And I listen to y'all because a lot of older dudes in the community, they like to talk shit about our generation, what we're not doing. But the thing is, a lot of them don't put us up on game. Right. And those dudes actually do that. So right. that's, that's why... Nice. I listen to him and respect him. No, he respects so, him, man. That's why I'm grateful that uh, I'm grateful that King came out today. Yeah, Darnell Davis. Yeah, I mean, and also it's because you, you know, a lot of people want it just to have it, for, but for cloud reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying if I put you on, so there's a there's I don't know how many people verse with the Bible, but you know, Matthew seven six talks about you know, casting things that are valuable to dogs and the pigs. You know what I'm saying? You cast your pearl upon the swine, it's going to get crushed. Yeah. Because in a pig's mind, it doesn't have the concept of something that's of treasure. You right. know what I'm saying? That's how some people are. And that's not a that's not a general that's not just a generational thing. Mm -hmm. Um because I catch myself sometimes like, damn, so these can't you put the damn cell phone, you know, I'm talking about them, put this cell phone down, you know, we used to talk about right. you know, without it, but you know, when you have people cuz like when I was younger, I was out seeking knowledge. I was seeking out information because at the end of the day, I knew I didn't have it. Right. And so when you're making the conscious effort to go seek it, because all you have to, sometimes the hardest thing you have to do is ask. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, if you get people that come in and they're just like, hey, put me on game about this. I'm not going to lie to you. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not going to sit here, you know, if you ask me something pertaining to my organization, uh, another organization, I'm giving you my best insight, right. I'm giving you my perception, I'm giving you what has made me successful in, you know, the STEM field, in the fraternity, in, you know, the the the, the academic setting, but I'm not going to lie to you, right. you know, and I, I agree, there are a lot of older people who discredit this generation's attempt to express themselves, talk about mental health, talk about, you know, things that allow them to be themselves. That's not a bad thing. It's right. different and it's either it's something that you can come to terms with or you just get the fuck out of the way. And so that people can continue to like make a forward progression because progression doesn't always have to be, you know, like the like a trail of ants. Yeah. Left over right, you know what I'm saying? And so you know, an adaptive mind requires different ways of thinking, but understanding the why. Right. You know, so again, guys like one could come in and say, hey, I have these goals about promoting and discussing and putting topics regarding the health and progression of the black community right. in a very, you know, out there way. Not out there as in like concept wise, but in a way that. People have to look at it. Right. You have to look at this now. Yes. I'm bringing it to your attention. Why can't we talk? You know, not only why are we not talking about why can't we talk about it? And I think with a lot of older people, when they're confronted with issues that they themselves are not equipped with, it becomes, uh, you know, you know, it becomes very dismissive. Yes. That's why there's such a disassociation mm -hmm. with the generations because you got one people, you got one group of people that want to learn, and you got another group of people that don't want to teach right and up until this point we've always had somebody teaching us something right. whether we wanted to or not yeah. and then all of a sudden we get to a point where you know to connect that connect that bridge we have to do discussions like this as black men as 
as people in general, as conscious-minded individuals, we have to sit down and ask ourselves, like, not only where are we going, not only who you are, but what is your passion, what is your purpose, you know, how do I get there, what does that look like, because if you don't know, and that's part of it too, a lot of people don't know how to answer your questions because mm -hmm. they're not even open enough, to, they're not open up enough to learn. That's right. That's you know what I'm saying? So. A, a, a great a great leader has always been a great listener, and a great listener is always a great learner. So I myself can't help anybody if I'm always telling them what they need to do. When sometimes I you know I, I may just need to shut the fuck up and color. That's right. You know what I'm That's saying? Good. I may need to. All right, I don't know what you're like. My daughter talked to me about Snapchat. Yeah. First time I heard Snapchat, I was like, what? is she explaining me the concept? She still has to explain to me the concept. I don't know nothing about it. I got stock in it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I got stuck <laughs> at it, but I know that because I know it makes some money. But you know, I had to sit down and really be like, you know, saying things like, with progressive questions and movements similar to ones, we have to sit there and really ask ourselves, okay, I see what's being presented, but why is it being presented? Why is it being brought up? Right. What do I not know about it? What am I familiar with? What gaps can I fill? How do I push this forward? Do I need to stand out of the way? Because yeah. sometimes that's the best way to help with certain movements and to any of those older generations that are constantly in the way of younger progressives get the fuck out of the way yeah. let them do their job dude like it, it's it's not a pissing context at the end of the day we're all going towards the same goal we all want to be mentally spiritually physically fit individuals who can break generational curses who can seek out opportunities uplift those to the left and the right and like in the most level playing field possible in the more divided you know the more division within our own cells within our own units that we present the more barriers it hinders that that's right. not success to me right and so you know long story short i would never deny somebody cuz i didn't have to i didn't get denied i may not have heard something that i understood at the time but if i ever really needed to know something I got it from somebody, right. you know. Um, so if you find yourself in that position, just know that at the end of the day, that older brother may not be equipped yeah. to really kick game to you because he can't kick something that he ain't got. That's real. That's deep. Shout out to my yoga master, no, my yoga sensei, Chanute, who also who describes the difference between elders and um, seniors. So that's a big deal. And y'all give a huge shout out, man. To Darnell Davis, you know what I'm talking about? The BJJ Brazilian Jiu Jitsu King. Come know to take over, man. I know. Hey, stay They're tuned. I'm ready to kick some ass this morning. Facts, 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 man. Thank you so much for coming out. Always a pleasure. Shout out to, to Young Thank Too. You. Thank Shout you. out to the one. Appreciate y'all. And this is King's Queen's podcast, man. Like, subscribe. <laughs>